Well, before we really started our crazy day, we decided to go fishing a little bit. So we're gonna see who uh, who can catch the most bass and uh, white perch. Hi, Aiden. Am I gonna beat you? Probably me. Probably you. <laughs> I think the pigs are ready to eat too. This was literally about a hundred percent germination rate. Look at that on those pumpkins. Doing phenomenally well. We planted a few other pumpkins just over here just because of the wasted space. And they were just old seed, but they're actually starting to come up too. So man, looking great. Okay, so after all that we've gotten accomplished today, <laughs> I forgot. If y'all remember me getting that. A few vlogs ago probably i don't know five or six vlogs ago you remember i got the um the swarm from that guy that was clearing land and um it, on his phone from uh from a friend that that clears land for a living called her a land solution so i i got that swarm uh got that old box rehabbed it bees are doing phenomenal very very good and i don't even know if i mentioned it and then one or two vlogs later i might have mentioned it they had they called me and they said look we're still having a ton of bees up here so what i what i think it was it was actually a mini split from that original hive so i, I went back down there put a nuke in and allowed them to um and then put their there was two frames they were on like old frames i actually don't think they had a queen i think they were just survivor bees that came off that hive and they just hadn't died yet and again i hate to say that but that's just the truth so what i did was I said, well, I'll set up a new just to make these people feel good because I think it was one of the situations where, you know, they, they had grandkids, they don't know about bees, so they were a little nervous with the bees being around them. So I said, well, look, I'll, I'll set up another box. We'll try it out and see what happens. And, you know, if it's bees, they'll, they'll all migrate in there. If it's not bees, then they'll eventually die. But that'll be a home until they, you know, until their life ends. So I forgot about that box. I was supposed to go check it about two, probably about a week ago. And uh, I didn't get to do it. So it started raining the day I was going to do it, and then I just completely forgot with all the other stuff going on. So I've got to run and check that box. They called and they're like, hey, if you, are you coming? <laughs> so, so I'm going to run back down there right quick, check this box, and kind of see how, see how they're doing. And uh, and like I said, I don't think they're going to be bees there. I really don't. But I'm going to try to do my due diligence and get it off their property, get my nuke back. And uh, I was hoping to call it a night, but it does not look like that's going to happen. So I'm going to run to go do the truck later. I think these bees made a fool out of me. I really thought these bees were going to be gone. I actually didn't plan to go into this little hive because I was thinking they'll be gone. These are just bees that were left over. There's still bees here. So after two and a half weeks, they shouldn't still be here if they were just bees left with no queen. So it's up here next to this was a pile of that old, old stuff. But this is the little nuke and there's a pile of bees on it. So <laughs> we might have another hive. So we'll, we'll see. Okay guys, so what we've got to extract this little hive. Now, you know, they're in a five frame hive body called a nuke. Um, I've got, of course, my, my gear, my gloves and all. And I've got a smoker. The smoke, since I'm not really going into them too much, the smoke is not a have to, but I want them to get used to smoke. <clears throat> so that way when we know if we take them back home and it is a hive, you know, we, they're used to smoke. Plus that will help them calm down a little bit. I also have some ratchet straps. We will actually ratchet it tight. That way it won't pop open while we're driving home. Then we have our lighter. And then we have some duct tape. Duct tape will go across the front and allow it to keep the bees inside. Uh, we like using mesh duct tape, like a screen. Um, I just didn't have any. So we're going to just use what we got, which is duct tape. So I'm going to get the little ratchet strap ready. And then basically we'll be 
good to go and hopefully picking up these little bees again i i didn't plan to <laughs> to be getting them i actually thought this was just going to be a quick pick up nuke box and go but there's bees there so we're gonna get them uh wrapped up with some ratchet straps and some bungee cords and man take it home see what we got it's, it's a little exciting. I, I didn't know we were going to actually have a beehive here. So, got this, got this, got my tape, and we are ready to rock. Okay, so you can see we're at the bee yard. It is a smooth 96 outside with a smooth 90 something percent humidity. It feels like 182 outside. And I'm sweating like a dog already. So, nothing better than adding insulated bibs, double socks, this uh, top that's double thick, shirt underneath. Means I'm going to lose a lot of sweat today. So anyways, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add some new boxes. If you remember, there's two boxes over here that the supers were almost full. So we have already pulled around 18 gallons. And then I've got two more boxes I think I can pull today. So our spring harvest will be right around 24, 25 gallons. So uh, along with doing that, though, is we need to check. If you remember, I'm going to show you the little one we have on the end that we, you know, that we got yesterday. Um, I'll say yesterday. We got some time. Um, pulled from that house. So if that comes out to be another swarm, great. Can't beat that. So we're going to go and check them all add new boxes to two of them because i know they're going to need some more room for their queens so i can already tell they're bearding they have not left me so that's a good thing so i'm gonna go ahead and get the the um extra foundation and boxes on it so it's gonna be a hot day dealing with some bees but it's okay i might lose a little weight while we're doing this and i'm okay with that lighting the smoker just a tip, don't use all the pine shavings and those bee things they send you. Just get some pine straw. We keep our pine straw in a little sack, paper sack, uh, we, which we have an abundance of you know, pine trees. But we'll to keep it dry. We'll put a big sack, like a five-gallon bucket full, somewhere. And that way we always have dried, good pine straw to smoke and light for the bees. All right, this one is slap full. This is one of the ones that I had to do. So we'll pull it out, but it is literally slap full of honey. All right, so this hive has actually honey locked itself. I took the super off it early spring, last time I harvested. Let me get some smoke going, because my smoker died. But she has honey locked herself, and they have honey locked themselves. So what I'm going to do is take a few of these out, basically check our board some new ones in, harvest this honey, then put them a honey super back on here. So uh, let's go ahead and get that done. I'm not going to take all of them, but I'm going to take a few of them. So that way she has room to lay up here. So again, start from the side. Push against it. Break the propolis, which is their glue. All right. Now, anyone that looks like it's got a brood on it or not quite finished, of course, we won't take. But so I know that first one they're not done with. But I'm going to go ahead and take this next one, I think. All right, there's honey. However, it's not capped off on this back side. I'm gonna cut this old comb off right there. And put this back in there. Leave that for them. A little bit more smoke on top. So that one's not finished either. Let's take this middle one. And you really need to put the new ones in the middle because that's where she's gonna come up at anyway close to the middle so first of all since you're checking this without a queen extractor you need to make sure our queen excluder make sure she's not on the frame that you're getting but usually she's not going to be there just because there's a lot of honey there and these are this is that aggressive hive i was telling you about the whole time they like to just pop at me don't get nervous but it does get a little crazy so all right this is a fully capped off hive so I'm going to smoke them just one time on here. And that way they can get back in their home. And I'm going to take the brush and brush them off. So you don't want them to hot honey lock themselves. So then they're going to get mad at her because she's not laying. Well, she can't lay because they honey locked her. So 
So I'm gonna knock all this excess off. Take this honey in for us. Beautiful honey. Beautiful, beautiful honey. Put this in our box. So we've got one. I'm gonna try to open up about two more spots if I can get enough honey. I see some brood, so that will solve. I might just do one. All right, so you see she's got brood right there. And then she's got some brood on this other side. So I'm gonna put two more, instead of staggering them, I'm gonna put two more fresh frames right there in the middle. And then we'll come back with the honey super so they can build up here, but ultimately she has more room to fill up down there. Don't forget your honey, I mean your, uh, Clean extractor, or clean excluder, excuse me. Put that on there. We'll put the new box on here. And we'll fill it up with uh, with actual honey supers for us. This will help us in fall. They'll go ahead and have a place to bake for fall. So it's kind of a dead time. They got tons of honey. I never want to take too much, but that uh, this will help them kind of get ready to give some space to them as well. So, you see I'm soaking wet. We got about four or five gallons worth of honey and I'm just gonna fall in the pool right now. All right, so we finished the bees. My camera actually got too hot, jumped in the pool uh, just to kind of get all the sweat off of us. But then we came up here, we had a birthday party up here with the big farm, uh, some of our family. And again, got to check on the big cows here. Our bull got out, which is never good. So we didn't have the camera rolling, so he broke some barbed bar, jumped over a five-strand barbed bar fence. That's crazy. So Birdie had some hops. So anyways, we got him back in. Everything's good there, and we're calling it a night, guys. So hope you enjoy our vlogs. We always try to have fun. Always try to make it fun. Always try to teach something, and ultimately try to have a good time with our family. God bless. Happy on set, y'all.